Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video we're going through May's craft along kits. Now, um, if you are one of our very generous Patreon pledgers, you'll be getting this kit in the mail or something very similar, like your cabs will look different and you may have different chip beads, but in addition to the craft along kit, you do have all the behind the scenes content that we upload as well as our digital download content, all of our written wire wrapping tutorials, leather templates, all, uh, coloring pages, all those different things. So we really wanted to thank you for your support over there because y'all make this possible. But we do also sell this on Etsy if you weren't able to pledge in time or if you're just not that into Patreon, or you just want to try it once and not have to worry about, you know, canceling a monthly membership or anything. Sorry, it's <laughs> early in the day and I am still, like, mumbling through my words. So the cabochon that we include is kind of just for your fun. You can do whatever you like with it. But the main core of this project is a wire tree. So you'll want to have something to uh, use as a mandrel. I really like... Uh, this little canister, but you could use the neck of a bottle, you could use, um, I mean, honestly, just whatever you have on hand. These little bead organizers make a really nice um, size mandrel as well. And in your craft along kit, you should have a spool of 18 gauge and a spool of 24 gauge uh, para wire. This has been enameled, so you don't have to worry about it tarnishing or turning your skin green or anything like that. And again, I think I already said it, but just in case I didn't, your cabochon uh, may or may not be one of this variety. We're doing a variety of different, um, you know, shapes and colorations and textures and stuff. And then you also have a little baggie of chip beads and then also a little baggie of like, um, you know, charms and earring components to make your own earrings out of. But that's, I, uh, here it is. <laughs> Now this is surgical steel for an earring kit. So just something very, very easy, simple, quick to put together, um, but that you could also use just however you like. So the tools that I'd recommend for this are your wire snips. Gotta have something to snip the wire with, as well as maybe bent nose pliers and round nose pliers. And either mandrel pliers, a mandrel, or even like a knitting needle or a pen would work. So, let me slide that off. We're going to start off with about 10 inches of our 18 gauge para wire. And you could use a variety of different wires, but I'm doing this tutorial kind of specifically for what we have in the craft along kits. And I'm going to start by just... Straightening that out. It was already pretty kink free, but I'm just going to shape this and let's do, can we do two rotations? Yeah, but that's not, if I had done a little bit more wire, <clears throat> we could have done two full rotations, but I'm just going to do one today. So right up here where these cross, I am going to cross them the other way. Maybe this one's on top of that one. And then I'm just going to do, I call it like a twist tie twist, where you grab both of the wires and then just start twisting them around each other. And it makes this a really pretty little like braid, twisty braid. Now that is an option. Or if you wanted something more, a little bit more advanced, we could have come in with our bent nose pliers and bent that and done like a woven bale, which that would look really cool also. But I'm just going to keep twisting this one. And every time I twist it, I just move out about this far. And then this helps me, I feel, to get very consistent, even little twisties. And until we have about an inch and a half of wire twisted. Also, a tool that I do recommend are nylon jaw pliers. These are really great for smooshing. That way we can get that part there to be flat. And throughout this project, I do keep my mandrel on hand just in case I want to uh, reshape it. Now, you could, even with just a regular hammer, like you don't have to have a jeweler's hammer, but in the past, I've taken 
you know, just a, a regular household hammer um, and like a book or um, my desk or just anything and kind of lightly hammered. Sometimes I'd put layers of uh, cardstock over it to keep any uh, hammer marks from happening. But today I'm actually going to use a bench block and my nylon head. Just know that if you don't have those tools, there are other ways around this. Uh, the whole idea here is to just work hard in this a little bit. That way it doesn't flex quite so much. So I apologize in advance, but this is going to be a little loud. Ooh. Now I'm just using the nylon side head, and you can see it's leaving a little bit of marking, um, like flattening, but not nearly as much as if I had used the... Uh, the steel side. Oh, stuff's jumping off of my desk. So there we are. And now you can see that's much less movement. It's much stiffer. I don't know. If, I mean, you'll experience it with your own piece. Now I do like to come back in though and just make sure that my shaping's still nice and round. There we are. Or whatever shape that you like. Um, for those gamers out there, anybody familiar with Chessex dice, they come in a very distinct little like plastic square thingy. Um, or I guess it's a rectangle, isn't it? But well, I mean, it's square on the base and then like rectangular this way. Um, and those are amazing. I love those for making a nice like diamond or square uh, shape for wire trees. So now our base is essentially done. You can, you know, you could have done a twisty all the way around if you twisted all your wire. Uh, you could do like intricate weaving, all sorts of different things. But now we're going to come through and use our 24 gauge. Now in other wire trees that I've made, I've used like, you know, anywhere from 30 to 30, 28, 26, and 24 are my favorite weaving wires. Most commonly though, I use 28 and 26. But for wire trees, if I want a little bit more substance to them, I do like to use the 24 gauge. So I'm going to come through, and actually on the edge of my desk here, you can see I have these little notches, and I'm going to do 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, hmm. Let's go 14 inches. I like giving myself just a little bit more than what I need, um, because you can always trim it off, but it's hard to make the wire be longer. And, ouch, just punched my lamp. Um, I'm going to pull off multiple lengths of this. You can do however many as you like, but I do recommend at least five. So there's three. There's... four. Now we'll do one last length. But let's go ahead and start with five because then we can get a, look, a feel of how that's going to look. Um, and then we can decide from there if we want to add more. Okay, just twist in. And you can see this pair of wire is fantastic. It's as close to dead soft as I've been able to get. Um, like it just comes kind of standard that way, though it does work harden up really nicely without flaking or chipping or getting brittle. And what I mean by the dead soft is, um, it'll, it, there's no spring back. So as you can see with this wire, I can just take it and, and it stays like right there. Like, um, it has a very like plastic movement as opposed to an elastic movement, if that makes sense. Okay. So now we're going to come through and line up the ends of the wire and I'm just going to hook this onto here so that our little loop is hanging from our 24 gauge sorry I'm fighting a sneeze too and we're going to attach by twisting once and then twice and you could thrice go through let's go ahead and do that um, and you can have it spread quite far but I like to do mine a little closer together. And we're going to do this for all five wires. Let me see if I can't 
tweak the camera just a bit and then zoom in. There we go. This should work out pretty nicely. But yeah, I've attached it and then I'm just going to move it off to the side. Hmm. Now, wire wrapping trees or something, they're one, I'm not going to lie, they're one of the first projects that I saw, like, you know, like on DeviantArt, gosh, like a million years ago. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I want to make that. <laughs> and they're just, you know, everyone has their own distinct style in some ways. And uh, it's something that, you know, um, is a very, like, there's the basic technique, but you can embellish it and a lot, you know, make it your own you, you truly can make it your own and it, it can get it discouraging sometimes with jewelry or with a lot of art firms I think to be able to you know think oh I want to make this and then you go and you look and see and you're like oh everybody else has already done it um you know it's as artists I think we all want to you know be like unique and original and like you know uh you stand out a bit you know it attract not just clients but like to it, it feels good I think. <laughs> and uh, this is something that I was actually talking to whenever I started getting into drawing more to our good friend and very talented artist, Mitch Faust. Um, I'd had these ideas that I wanted to like draw and watercolor these uh, mermaids that weren't just like, you know, Ariel the Little Mermaid, but like I wanted to do these, you know, shark shield maidens that have like spears and shields and they have like different you know, styles of shark tails and, you know, like, uh, have the mermaid be very reflective of the species of the fish. And I felt like that was such, like, it felt to me an original concept. I hadn't seen it before, you know, just, and then of course I Googled it <laughs> and it has been, I mean, pages upon pages of not just other people's like, you know, oh, well, somebody's already done this, but Hundreds of people have done it and done it very, very well, like much better than I feel like I'll ever be able to do, um, though I try to discourage that same sentiment in other folks. But it's like I, I empathize with that, like it can feel very daunting and intimidating to see someone honed in their craft be like, do this idea that it's like, and so I, I felt discouraged, you know, that like, well, why should I even bother? Why should I even try? You know, it's already been done. And Mitch just looked at me and he's like, there are hundreds of people out there who've drawn dragons, but the world hasn't seen your dragon. You know, it's with art, it's, you know, it's not just the final product that you make, it's the, the making of it, the, this was your version. And so that's something that I try to, you know, and he said it like very eloquent and like fleshed out and like awesome, like changed my life kind of stuff. Um, and so that's something that I'd encourage y'all to be like, don't feel like that just because this is, you know, the wire trees here are something that have been done by probably almost every wire wrapper on the planet. Don't feel like that yours is any less special or any less unique, you know, because it's yours, you know, it, the world, you know, the world needs that. It needs each of our own unique or you know, uh, like I've made, gosh, so many of these sometimes that my eyes cross and I can't tell the difference between them, <laughs> but, um, don't let that discourage you. So anyways, um, <laughs> so we have all these little root tendrils coming off. Now, if you want a very leafy top of the tree or like very, very dense, you could feel free to add more. Um, but I feel like, I feel like this is going to be pretty good. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grip here and here with my thumb and finger and coming out, I'm not tightening it up like directly to the wire. I'm leaving just a little bit of a gap, but I'm just going to hold it and do more of that twist tie twist. And I'm doing just five repetitions. It's a nice round number. Um, <laughs> so there we are. Two, three, four, five. Kind of bring them together, scooch it off to the side, and come into the next one. And I know I've done a tutorial about this in the past. Two, three, four, five. But that was like a couple years ago. And there are many other very talented and skilled YouTubers out there who've done their own renditions. Three, four, five. But I just keep hearing Mitch Faust in my head going, you know, do yours. 
Achoo! Excuse me. Sorry, I'm all sneezy today. Took an allergy pill, but that hasn't really helped. So just coming in and one, two, three, four, five. Now, even though I'm being being very repetitive here, you could twist them every single which way. You could have some be longer than the others. Like it's don't feel like you have to do it the way that I'm doing it. This is just kind of a base foundation structure for y'all to follow as your heart pleases. But I highly recommend if if this isn't what you're into, like if you're like, well, I want very uneven, like I twist them all the same way, but you could twist them like the other way. I actually do think I'm going to extend the side to because we're going to be bringing it around to the center. And I feel like, I mean, it's a little off center, so it's longer from here to here than it is from here to here. So bringing those back out, I'm going to go. And just giving it like eight twists total, I think. Coming around. Twist, twist, twist. Okay. And now I'm going to take these two and twist them together. One, two, three. And, uh, Gosh, I guess now is the time that I should decide if I want the tree very centered or if I want it growing off to one side. I think I want it growing off to one side. I've really been enjoying using negative space in some of my jewelry here lately. So in which case, I guess I'll need to extend this one out just a bit. Two. And then, nah, we'll keep, we'll keep going. We'll just see what happens. So now we're going to twist these two together. Twist, twist, twist. Oh, thank you, watch. My alarm went off, letting me know. Normally, like, I woke up really early today. <laughs> there it goes. So, um, it's like, hey, wake up. And I'm like, hey, I'm awake. But you were there. Okay, so normally, if I wanted it centered, I'd have done these two root sections twisted together and then met in the middle. But to have it kind of growing off to the side, I'm going to have this one growing, like, growing into this root cluster. So we'll have that. And at this point, I do recommend being consistent in the direction that you twist, just because it can give the trunk a little bit more of a, like a spirally growy look. Gosh, words though. <laughs> and so now we have, you can see this whole cluster here, and we're just going to twist these sections. Oh, oh. around like that and so you can see it's a little off center which if that just drives you completely bonkers then have it might be nice and centered okay and now i'm going to start spreading the branches out and this can give you a little bit of an idea we could go ahead and just thread on our chick beads and have it go all the way down to the base but I've found it helps to open up a little bit of space uh, so I'm actually going to start on this side twist these two together so there's sorry I don't mean for my hands to get in the way there's one two three I think that'll be plenty And then these two. One, two, three. I don't know if you guys can hear my wrist popping. That's a, I've, last time I made a video on making wire trees was a couple years ago. And since then I had been doing like a video a day. Uh, and it really started taking its toll on my hands and wrists and stuff. So unfortunately I've had to cut back. But yeah. That is what it is, though. I've enjoyed it while it's lasted. <laughs> so, just little little branches like that. And I'm going to come in here. Four, five, six. And 
one, two, each, three, four, five, six. Let's go eight. Seven and eight. Okay. Now, if I were doing a tree that had no leaves, like no chick beads, I probably would have used like twice as much um, wire. But I wanted to be able to leave a lot of space for the mother of pearl that we're going to be using in celebration at the time of recording of Mother's Day. Derp, derp, derp. <laughs> so for everybody watching, happy Mother's Day to you. Okay. And you don't have to use chip beads. You could use round beads. You could use seed beads. Um, you can make your own little, like, polymer clay leaves and stuff. There's endless possibility. So, you can fit, yeah, about three on comfortably, I think. Well, maybe a fourth one. Let's do a fourth one. <laughs> just a fourth thin one. No, I'm just going to do three. That was too thick. But yeah, don't, don't hesitate to add some, take some off, you know. And now I'm just wrapping around our outside wire. And I've found this is where it comes in really handy to have work hardened our frame is it keeps it from distorting. And that way we can pull the wire nice and tight and it still keeps everything together. Okay, so now we'll have one, two, we'll use a big one, three, Oh, it looks like we'll only be able to fit two. That's okay. And I like to um, hmm, go in this direction as I wrap. And then whenever I get past our center point here, I'll be weaving in that direction. For uh, Honestly, I don't think I have a particular reason. I just like it. And <laughs> I think with art, that, that's a good enough reason. We don't, you know... you. If you like it, you don't have to justify why you did it. And sometimes, you know, my hands will be cramping up. So don't hesitate to use your pliers to pull things nice and tight. There's no point in stressing your hands more than what you have to. And now, we'll add that one takes up just about all that space. And I'll show you guys, too, an alternative for since I'm not able to fit a whole lot of, for lack of a better term, leaves um, in the canopy of this tree. What we can do, once I get all the way around and I decide how I want it filled out, I'm going to show you guys how to use this, you know, wire sticking off the edges to build out like a fuller canopy. Will this bead work? That's something that I really enjoy too about chip beads is they're all wonky and weird and sometimes like I'm like this bead just is not going to work there but sometimes it'll be perfect somewhere else though. So uh, I don't know I like using them because it forces me out of sometimes what's comfortable and encourages experimentation until I find what does work. And oftentimes that comes out way more beautiful and interesting than what I had originally imagined. I'm doing two to four wraps, you know, about, I guess, three <laughs> uh, wraps. It just, it makes it feel nice and solid because um, we're going to be coming through and giving some shape to these different branches and roots. And I want it tight enough uh, that it doesn't just get all gunky. I don't know. I'm not quite sure how to explain it, but we'll be demonstrating it soon. So just threading the little beads right onto our 24 gauge wire, if I can see to get it in there. But yeah, I'm really glad that we do have the option to uh, be able to beef up the canopy, because these beads, um, in your craft along kit, you won't necessarily have Mother of Pearl, by the way. Like, we've got all sorts of different chip beads um, that we're including in the craft along kits. It's a little bit of a mystery crate, but again, sometimes working with something that we would have never originally purchased or, you know, been inclined to use can help us grow as an artist. 
And if what we make isn't, I don't know how many times I've made something that it's not particularly my taste or my favorite, but the client loves it or, you know, a customer at a convention or something will be like, oh my God, it's perfect. And I'm like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> going to fit on just another chip bead and I'm doing this in real time with you guys that way you know uh, YouTube does have an option where you can put it in like two times speed or you can just you know skip forward a bunch but you know um, I, I enjoy doing this in real time and I feel like it's my channel so I do what I want <laughs> I, I said it before but I think it's worth saying again um, I'm not one of those five minute craft channels that just makes it look like wizardry and witchcraft uh, Nope, it's just a whole bunch of repetitive, sometimes hard work, but totally worth it. But yeah, it's it's looking a bit sparse up in the top, but don't worry, we'll be able to add in more. And using a larger mandrel, you know, the difference between a pendant and a sun catcher that hangs in a window for me is honestly just size and whether or not you're wearing it around your neck. Um, so don't feel like you know, limited by conventional standards of what might be an acceptable pendant size. Be like, an acceptable pendant size is the size that you make and wear. So for this one, down by the base of the branch, I do prefer to use slightly smaller beads because I feel like I can fit them in more comfortably. And then I like to use the larger beads, like this super chunky square one, like cube one rather, um, out towards the tip because it fills kind of fills out that space. They look like marshmallows. <laughs> yeah, now I'm going to start building this way. And I think, I think that'll make me happy. We'll see. Just grabbing, pull on, there we go. And it's starting to get a little full, but that's okay. I like big bushy trees. There we go. Maybe let's use that one. Maybe this one will work. Yes, I love it. But see how that one fits just right along the edge of the wire? Like, what a crazy random happenstance. Okay, now feeding through. You could also, um, using nylon jaw pliers is a great way to not mar up your wire whenever you grab it to pull. These ones are still pretty new. So they don't, uh, the jaws don't quite meet yet. I haven't worn them down. I'm going to give it a week. <laughs> but there is also a product called Tool Magic that you could dip your pliers into. And uh, there will be links down in the video description to where you can purchase your own craft along kit if you're interested, as well as where I rec where I get my um. I would recommend getting pliers from like the same varieties, and their Amazon affiliate links. So anything that you purchase through them greatly benefits our company. So that's always appreciated. But if any, if nothing else, it's something to get you started, kind of in the right direction of, you know, what search terms to uh, put in to find something that's. You know, if what I link isn't completely suitable for you, um, it might be just the thing to get you started off in the right direction so you can find what is. And it's also, I had made custom handle pliers, or plier handles, out of uh, thermoplastic. That way, uh, you know, I could use my pinky as well, which that's locking up on me today. Oof. And this is our last branch with little leaves. So let's see. I don't know if y'all can hear the burbs outside, but it makes me super happy. <laughs> okay. So there's one rotation and two rotations and three rotations. So at this point, before we go any further with adding the chip beads, I'm going to come in just with my round nose pliers and see if we can't start giving it, I'm going to start at the farthest tips of the roots that we had added originally. And I'm just grabbing loosely 
with one side of the pliers on each side of the wire and then just giving it a twist. And you can alternate your hand position. You could do it very repetitive, repetitively, like all in the same direction. You could do it multiple times on the same route. Um, but I like to come in and just hit up these different sections. Excuse me. And that way you can see that kind of gave, made it a little bit more gnarly in twisted like actual roots and I'm going to come in the next segment up where we had two wires twisted together and um, just kind of position the pliers and twist and twist and twist and sometimes you can see that one lifted up quite a ways just smoosh it on back down where you want it to be and so now up here for this one I'm gonna ooh, I think I'm gonna do if you start to do it in one direction and you're like, oh man, I don't like that nearly as much as I thought I would, just do it the other way. This wire can take it. Ah, but we got a little bit of distortion on our frame. Quick. Panic. No, don't panic. <laughs> Everything will be okay. Now that we have that wire in there, though, it makes it a little bit difficult to uh, shape the edge. But you can see I'm just pushing down on the mandrel just a bit and reshaping our bottom edge in that way it'll be all right. Now also there are alternatives to using, like if we used a 16 gauge and like hammered the heck out of it, uh, we wouldn't have to run into that. But there are also like welded steel rings that you can get that have been enameled. <clears throat> so lots of, lots of different ways that you can do this. There we go. So that one twisted up real nice. And now we're gonna come in here on the main part of the trunk and twist it a bit. And again, just smush things as your heart desires. I'm going to come in here and twist, twist, twist. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> twist. Well, I don't like that either. Creep. There we go. Yeah, just keep doing the thing. So there we are. That distorted a little bit but we'll just grab it with our fingers and push and pull to get it to do more of what we're looking for I hope everybody's okay i hear sirens hope nobody was naughty okay so we could at this point trim the wires off nice and flush twist them down and honestly, if I were to do that, I'd have done five rotations instead of just three around the edging. Um, but let's see if we can't fill this in a little bit more. And I'm going to start from the center up by the, um, the bale. Well, rather, what will be the bale. I hope the dogs don't start howling. That would be super professional. <laughs> but yeah, we can just add in some chip beads here at the top, and I'm going to come down and just pick a spot and start sewing the wire through. And there's a little bit of bare wire here, but I'm not worrying about putting a bead on that because it'll be covered by what we add on this wire. But now I'm just going to kind of whip stitch on around. until we get down here and I'll end up clustering all of our loose end wires over here on this side and this side for us to do the next step with excuse me and so now threading on a bead boop boop and another bead and another bead and I wanted to give you guys enough chip beads to be able to make like a really nice full canopy. Um, so hopefully there's enough beads in there for you. And I don't know, that's not quite 
what I was looking for. I think the shape that I went with on that one. And so I'm actually going to push them so that they sit more on the front of the wire frame as opposed to stacking in between it. See how that kind of camouflages it a little bit more? And this way we can almost get a little bit more of an oak tree look or like a conical um, like beech tree or something. But we'll see how this goes. And also something that we can do, if you can see how these are kind of wiggling around on me, is we can come in right here and tighten up that wire on those beads. And that way it'll kind of stay put. There's less wiggle going on. Okay. Now this wire looks pretty crowded, so I'm actually just going to sew it through to meet the others all on the far side. There we go. And I'll do one more. There we go. And now we'll start adding onto this wire. Now also, um, I've seen some really beautiful wire trees made out of like 18 and 20 gauge wire. And then the coiling was done onto like the branches and stuff. So that's that's something that I thought was really cool. Yep. And so I'm just going to kind of position that on top of the uh, frame wire. And come through and cinch that down nice and tight. And now with all of these ones, these uh, wires here, I'm going to start with this one. And I'm just going to sew through and fill in. You could do a very tight, um, tidy coiling. Or we could just not. <laughs> uh, that's always an option. Um, but no, we can just kind of come through and fit these wires in between each other. until we get quite a few. I'm going to take the one that was the lowest most wire and bring that all the way to the center if I can manage it. And that way you can see it's really filling in and beefing up our frame. And you could add little swirlies and all sorts of things. Um, I've done that in a tutorial in the past and there's I can't emphasize enough, there is no right or wrong way to do any of this stuff. If it holds together, is comfortable to wear, and looks the way that you want it to, then you did it right. There we go. And I'm not going to snip it yet, just because I'm very indecisive. <laughs> so again, I'm just going to come through and do more of that same whip stitch. Now also, if I had done a beaded or wire woven or even chainmail frame for this, I would be using these wires to whip stitch the tree to the frame, which is something that I'm going to be doing, hopefully, if you guys want, in a future tutorial where we have like an intricate frame, but just pretend with me for a moment that this is bigger or the tree is smaller and the tree would fit right in this negative space, I'd be using these little wires here to whip stitch it to that inner circle and that way there'd be a nice little wire tree sitting in the middle. Typically whenever I do that, especially if I'm trying to sneak it in with some weaving, is um like I do my weaving out of let's say a 26 gauge wire and then I'd be doing the stitching with a 28 gauge. That way it'll fit a little bit more comfortably in between um, the spaces between the wires, if that makes sense. There we go. You can see this is really filling in quite nicely, I think. And the, all the wires are nice and bound off. We don't have to worry about anything coming apart or losing a bead beyond the bead itself breaking. 
that I found a lot of gemstones are pretty durable we shouldn't have to worry about it I'd be delicate with um like any softer stones like turquoise or malachite like I wouldn't wear it during like heavy construction or be like hey it's time to hammer my jewelry today <laughs> like I'd watch out for those guys but beyond that like uh, especially anything in the quartz families they hold up really nicely okay and so now I'm trying to give it just a little bit of even spacing in case we decide to add some little spirals to the roots. And I want so badly to make my own little polymer clay, or I think I might make it out of like epoxy sculpt or polymer clay and then electroform it so that it's copper as well to make a little fairy door to have down in the roots because then it like our, our company logo is a um you know is like a tree and I just think that'd be so cool to be able to make little like logo pendants um maybe one day we'll see but yeah you can see the difference now between you know the overgrown foliage and the greenery uh, beads <laughs> and just stopping at the frame so, and with different beads and sizes and stuff, you'll get different effects, but I kind of like that. It's drawing out of the lines a bit, and I think that's always worth doing. Okie dokie. Now, for this one, though, uh, I want the beading to be able to start from there, so I'm just going to take this guy, this wire, and thread it through right here. Plump, like that. So we cheated. It's fine. <laughs> Everything will be fine. And uh, just a little bead. Do, do, do. And a bigger bead. Do, do, do. And a weird bead. Do, do, do. Ah, yeah, perfect. Um, how's that going? Yeah, that's like perfect. Yes, I love that. Okay. And then just whip stitching this on around. Okay, nothing broke. It made like a crunching noise, like a crunchy, <laughs> and I was like, uh-oh. But no, everything's fine. So yeah, that just fits on like that. And it seems like I did more on this side than on the other side, but that's okay. So now we're just whip stitching this down. And I think I'm going to take this guy just all the way around and down. And I really love doing uh, wire trees whenever we're traveling to events in the car. Oftentimes, like how we started on the root end here, I'd start on the branch end and just put like three beads or, you know, however many. Um, and then do the twists. That way the beads are on there. So I'll have it all prepped. And then I'll just have like a bucket of trees. <laughs> well, a bucket, but like a bin of trees um, that are like, you know, a fourth of the way started and then when we're just sitting there like watching tv or you know in a long car ride i'll be able to pick them up and just do the twisting and the wrapping part without having to worry about bringing the loose beads with me or you know anything like that it's um it's very nice it's a great way i think to get lots of pieces made for whenever we're going to like craft shows and conventions or making stuff for on etsy <clears throat> Because it can be very challenging, and I, I don't necessarily recommend it to, you know, if it's not your thing, don't force yourself into it. But um, for a while there, Randy and I were doing 30 events a year. Um, and again, I want it starting a little sooner, so I'm just going to thread through there. But uh, it was such a challenge to keep enough inventory that we started feeling like we had to like mass produce handmade things. And that was one of the tactics that I used to be able to make a lot of product in a little bit of time. I didn't always feel like it was necessarily maybe my best work. Like I wasn't making a lot of like show stopping, like mind blowing. Oh my God, that's the best thing I've ever made. Um, but they were fun, simplistic pieces that I would sell for like $15 out of the booth, you know, and uh, it kept our bills paid. So we did that because <laughs> um, that was our goal at the time was like, oh, please, we need we need more money to pay bills and uh, buy more beads. Like, it's been a vicious cycle for ages of, I need to buy more stuff so I can make more stuff so I can buy more stuff. <laughs> but uh, I've said it before, and I'll say it again, uh, crafting can be a very slippery slope of addiction, and we are enablers. Like, 
no one ever has to justify to me why, you know, it's like, oh, well, I went and spent a bunch of money on beads. It's like, why would you do that? I'd be like, um, beads, hello. <laughs> I'm that same way about plants, too. Like, I'm like, please don't make me justify these decisions. I know I probably shouldn't have, but look, it's a plant. But if your hobbies bring you joy, I think that's worth investing in. Okay, so just sliding. Now, also, I'd mentioned the price of what we would sell them for. Those were much smaller, much more simplistic uh, trees at the time. Like, they didn't quite have as many stones. They didn't have the overgrowth. We didn't have as much twisting and stuff. But um, it can be really difficult to price your work, and that's something we've talked about in other videos, too. But um, if you're having difficulty with pricing... Uh, I recommend keeping an open mind and, you know, because something that might not sell for 25 at one event, you know, might sell like quick, like a bunch of them at another event. So uh, Randy and I don't really change our pricing based on where we are. We do try to keep our prices as low as possible um, just because, you know, we've been college students who wanted something pretty but had no extra money. We've been 30-year-olds who wanted something pretty bad, no extra money, you know. Um, and it makes me personally very happy to be able to share my art with people and them not feel like they're breaking the bank. Though I do also allow myself some more extravagant art pieces to put up for sale for if people do want to drop a pretty penny on what I make. So, uh... Yeah, for, for pricing, I do recommend diversification. Like, if you like making trees, maybe make some that are small and simplistic for being able to sell at a smaller, or at a lower price point than, you know, but then you could have your big, like, art pieces that have lots of intricate weaving and that, you know, has chunks of, not just part of you in it, but chunks of your soul, like, in it. Um, and sell those, you know, definitely for more. But that way, if somebody enjoys your work, but they are on a tight budget, you know, they might be able to pick up one of the smaller, more affordable pieces, and that might be more their style as well. Like something that's a showstopper on Instagram, you know, people might not be able, or be inclined to wear every day, you know, just to the office or around the house and stuff. So there we are with our little overgrown marshmallow tree. <laughs> um, I feel like it's naked, like right there, which we could, and we'll do that. I'm going to bring this wire back around to fill in that naked spot, because why not? Oops. So again, just whip stitching around, but in the other direction. And this is going to make it, you can see how that wire sits. Hopefully you can see how that wire is sitting on top right there. And that's okay if you're okay with it. It's not my personal favorite, but I'll live. Hopefully. So I'm just looping through. I do want to go around these beads. There we are. And now let's just fill in with a nice little... How does one bead look? I think that'll be just fine. And I feel like that gives us a little bit more of a complete canopy too. So now I'm just going to loop this through. Trying to go in between beads as much as possible. Yes, there we go. And I'm actually gonna, to keep this one coming forward, I'm gonna loop around those two beads, just there on the back. And cram that through there. Push and grab and tighten yeah and now that's not going to wobble around as much hopefully in theory <laughs> now let's stabilize this wire by giving it a second and if we can a third wrap though i don't know if it's quite long enough at this point to be able to do that and this is where the bent nose pliers come in really handy is because you can reach into those little tight spots and grab it oops And kind of smush and tuck. Sorry, checking to make sure I'm still in frame. But yeah, 
So there we are with our stabilized canopy. And now from here, uh, I don't actually know, I think, if I'm going to do a bunch of swirls on the roots. I think I'm just going to snip them and smush them. And that's all right. But I am going to fill in these bare spots in the root bed. Because I had left them kind of equidistantly placed when I thought I might be doing spirals. And you know, now that I'm looking at it, I might decide to do spirals. Yeah, let's do spirals. Okay. <laughs> Cannot emphasize enough, you do you. So I'm giving myself anywhere between like, you know, a centimeter to maybe two. And I don't want it too long, but I don't want them too short either. And we have some super petite, very, very petite tipped round nose pliers here. Like you can see the difference between what I normally use, petite tip. And I love these, for, especially for these um, thinner gauged wires because you can get just the tiniest little loop-de-loops. And I'm just going to grab that and bring it in. Now, a downside to doing little spirals like this is they can get snagged on stuff. More so than if they weren't there. Uh, but that's why I keep them very specifically on the front side of the pendant. And I'll often put it on a chain or a necklace that's designed to be worn a little bit longer. That way, hopefully, it won't get tangled up like in your hair or something. But honestly, people, long hair people... <laughs> Uh, you're, you're probably used to that at this point, just being like, well, I'm stuck in a tree again. Or the tree's stuck in me again. But yeah, just making little twisties. And those are a ton of fun, too. Um, if you if we were to use, Parawire also carries a very lovely bare copper wire that oxidizes nicely. It's completely dead soft. It's just butter to work with. Um and these little spirals would stand out really nicely, I think. <clears throat> and I'm being a, a little bit random in, or at least trying to be, I think I'm being random, in what direction I'm twisting and, you know, how that's going. An alternative would have been to do a twist and then with the extra wire kind of weave that in. That would have stabilized the twists to the tree bed, like to the tree base a little bit better. But this is what's happening, so we'll do that. And if you're not confident in this kind of, you know, the spirals and stuff, you could always trim them off. Or just let your clients know, whether you're selling it at a craft show or on your Etsy shop. Come on, words. Or on your Etsy shop. You can let them know and be like, hey, uh, this might get snaggled on stuff. You know, uh, Randy and I, my partner and I, we offer free repairs on all of our work. So if something were to get snaggled, that way people don't have to worry about it. So now this is an instance where I like to come through with my nylon jaw pliers and just smoosh the heck out of it. Is my battery about to die? Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Um, quick panic! <laughs> Panicking intensifies. So we're going to come in and do the bail. And while we do that, I'm going to ask you guys to please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And if you have any questions, leave it down in the video description below. Um, if you enjoy my channel and would like to support more, you know, free tutorials and stuff, as well as participate in our craft along kits, please check us out on Patreon. Oh my God, I don't want the camera to die. Um, <laughs> I, oh no. So yeah, I've just twisted these spare wire, uh, wires around here. And I think I'm going to do the little swirly bits on the back. But if the camera dies, guys, I love you. <laughs> Thank you for watching. <laughs> um, Y'all are like the coolest. If you want to uh, share pictures of what you've made, we do have a Discord channel now where you can kind of like share stuff on there. And so I've just twisted around quite loose, but well enough. And I'm going to do like cute little spirals here on the back. Oh, I should have checked the phone charge, but also this is like an hour long video. Oops. Well, it's only half an hour long if you put it in two times speed. And then you get to listen to me sound like a squirrel. A wire wrapping squirrel. There we go. And now to keep anything from being pokey, I'm just going to smush it like that. 
Okay, and there we are. We made a pendant, guys. Thank you guys so much for sticking around with me through this video. I do hope that it was helpful to you. Again, I said all the good stuff's down in the video description if you want, like, links and how to support the channel and stuff. But a huge shout out to all of our patrons because, again, I couldn't do this without you guys. Y'all have changed our life. Uh, go buy stuff on Etsy. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding, but also kind of. <laughs> um, we are doing a big shop update in the next couple of days, but that's for people who are watching it as a new video and not in the future, but I'm going to stop talking now. Happy crafting, everybody. I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye. <laughs>